I am one of two or three first Muslim hijabi female filmmakers in the nation. My name is Iman Zawari and I'm a lecturer in the Department of Telecommunications for digital film and television production. I grew up in a small town in Florida's panhandle called Panama City, Florida. Panama City was very boring. It's a very rural city, absolutely no diversity. Me and my group of friends that grew up there, we were kind of the only Muslims or at the time brown people that were in the city. There was no stories about Muslims growing up and if they were, they were the terrorists, they were a part of the harem, they're either hypersexualized or, or, or oppressed and always violent. But it's so funny because any of us, when we watched it, we would like look at the credits, we're like, oh, that's a Muslim name, look at that, yay! Even with Back to the Future, when they had the Libyans that were like, the Libyans are coming, and they were shooting them, we were like, yay! <laughs> we were like yaying to representation because like, hey, we're on TV. I decided in sixth grade at like, what? 11, 12 years old, that I have to take a stand for my people and who I am and educate others. The five of us, we would kind of band together and we really held on to our identity. We didn't push away from it. With the extreme racism that we faced, we addressed it through comedy. We were bored all the time, so what we would do to pass the time was create commercials and talk show hosts. So we created the Arsenio Hall show, where I was Arsenio Hall, and we had like Miss America, who was like a Saudi Arabian, but was like fully covered, and she came out and danced. We would educate and be comedic about who we are, and we never denied who we are, and I think I felt very strong in that is because I had that five core friends. I had graduated um, college, and then I got married, and then I got pregnant. And this is, this is the life of a woman, and especially as a woman artist, filmmaker, professor. I got pregnant with my first son, I was 23. And I had to make a decision on what I was gonna do next in my life. I never thought film would ever be a, uh, an avenue for me, especially as a brown Muslim woman. We were trained to be doctors, period. All of us were from families of doctors, we knew that if we have our education and if we are doctors, we are going to be successful. One of my close friends had, had introduced me to a filmmaker that was at FSU. And I'm like, why would you go to a film school at FSU? That sounds terrible. And he's like, oh, it's one of the best film schools. And then that, that was the first moment where I actually thought about, I was like, wow, he's Arab, he's in film school, it's one of the best, can I do this? My husband, who has been the biggest support for me, was like, you should definitely do it, there's no question. And then I made the decision to go to film school, but I had a two and a half year old and my husband was in law school. And so it was a, it's one of the most stressful times in our lives. He, he had to step up and he was trying to take his bar and then our mothers came in and helped. And so it was like this whole tribe that was making sure that I got the education and the artistry that I needed. Becoming an artist, for anyone, brown or not, <laughs> Being an artist, no, no family member was like, yay ha, you go do that girl. I haven't seen that in many. They were definitely apprehensive, um, but they didn't stop me, what I'll say. It's like, they let me do what I needed to do. They came to my screenings, they enjoyed my films, but they wanted me to find stability, which was really important. And they didn't get really happy until I got this job here. When I got this job here, they're like, yeehaw man, you made it, you made it. And I'm like, but, but I got an Emmy, that's not making it. I am, uh, one of two or three first Muslim hijabi female filmmakers in the nation. I started creating stories with Muslim women with hijab on, and they were taken and recepted so well nationally. Like it went to hundreds of film festivals all around the world and in America. And it's because no one was doing that. They showed a woman that's just like me and you, that wants to get the job, that wants to be a comedian, but she happens to be Muslim. And that's something that people were not seeing, so it was really well received in that sense. Right now I have three jobs. <laughs> I'm a filmmaker first and foremost. Um, I teach here and then I run this film grant which is the first American Muslim film grants. And balancing the three of those, including my two children and my family life has been a bit of a challenge, but it's something that I've tried to create a juggling act with. I've never felt the feeling of having to assimilate anything. When I walked into this room to teach my class for the first time, I was concerned. I was like, are these students gonna see me only as a Muslim woman and not as a filmmaker. And that, that feeling went away that first class because I'm just teaching the craft. I assessed what UF was. And I remember telling Houston, probably on the first or second week, I was like, I'm gonna create a film program here. I was like, we're in the College of Journalism. How is this gonna happen? How am I gonna create a, a narrative film program? And then slowly I started creating classes and I saw the need for it. And I'm so happy from what it's become now. We have so much to go, but we have 
the digital film and television program, which we did not have when I first came here as an adjunct. And being able to create that from the ground up with, of course, the help of, you know, Wells, Robert Ecos, and Sorrell was really kind of strengthening me as a storyteller while creating um, storytelling through the students as well. My vision and hope for teaching is to empower students to be comfortable in their own voice. I know how difficult it was for me to be the only one. Me and my co-partner from my, <laughs> from my film, we like always build each other up and be like, we're pioneers! Because there has been no one before us. Don't feel pressure from anyone else that tells you no. Create your own path, forge your own way. It is there for you and people wanna hear it. And thankfully you have me and some others that are coming up. This is your story. Let me help you find it and be, and be free and tell it. We are CJC.